Hello, everybody. Uh, I am live tonight. If you couldn't tell, let me adjust the camera so I can sort of see if I think that kind of works. We're working with one camera, so we're working on getting another one back up and running. OBS has been a little finicky lately, but I see you all are here anyways. Mr. Febby's here from Singularity themselves. That's nice to see. I do have your tubing here tonight. I've already cut it up a little bit, man. Um, sorry about that, but it had to happen. But I do also have some runs already done. The whole point of tonight's stream was kind of show you guys a couple simple bends here. Uh, we just have two left to connect up the GPU. And then I'm going to demonstrate how to use the cool little, as I drop it, uh, Dr. Drop air pressure tester for a loop. Uh, I did air test it already before I like closed off, obviously, the open spot. But so far, the loop holds air. So let's see if we can keep it that way. And I guess we'll get to that when... We get there, but uh, if you guys have any questions as I go along, feel free to ask. This is Singularity Computers acrylic 16, 12 millimeter acrylic tubing. Um, pretty much my new per personal favorite tubing, in my opinion. It's really nice to work with. Um, it's acrylic, so I guess it is a little bit more difficult to work with, I'd say, as far as like finishing the tubing and everything, but like for bending and everything, I have honestly not even noticed a difference for bending this compared to like how PETG can be really easy to bend and work with so overall I think it's a way better step up with acrylic tubing you get a lot more cooling compatibility as it's a much more durable tube uh, clarity is definitely a little bit higher in this than a PTG I mean if you look at like the ends you can tell this is just white whereas you look at like PTG and you see it's colored and can get a little foggy and whatnot so overall it's a really great tubing it's linked in the description so please check that out if you guys want to pick up some new 1612 it was pretty dumb to go with 1612 in this build, but that's what Hank wanted, and that's what we're giving him. So, here we are. Uh, I do actually have this run done. Uh, it's just going to be easier to get this tube done first. It was just straight, so kill me for having it done already. I figured you guys really kind of knew how to do straight runs by now. So, But if not, feel free to ask questions about it, and I can definitely help you. Uh, we're using Bits Power Multilink Fittings here, 1612, obviously. Uh, overall, so far, they've been fun to work with, so... I'm telling your wife... Uh-oh. That's not so good. <laughs> oh, boy. Sean's in here. Alrighty. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm probably just going to get started here. We've got my insert, so I'm just using a regular 12mm insert. I guess maybe I didn't link that, so... If somebody wants to link something in chat, link people 12mm inserts, or just all of them. We have... All different sizes of PVCs, whatever size you need. Sadly, right now, Singularity only comes in 1612. I'm not sure. Maybe Feb, you could answer us if they plan on getting any other sizes in the future. Although 1612 is personally my favorite. As I said, it's probably not the most ideal tubing for a small form factor build like this. However, I can kind of prove to you tonight that you can pretty much make it work. Uh, there is, you know, quite a few fittings in here. Uh, overall, a lot of them are just making it so all the runs are simpler. Um, we've got a couple 90s here that hook up back to the rad, and there is one run behind the reservoir that you guys can't even see. That's where the loop actually starts, and then it'll come out of here in the reservoir, in the radiator. Then it goes back into the other radiator, out into the in on the CPU block, and then out back into the GPU, then out of the GPU and back into the reservoir. So. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff. As I said, it's pretty cramped in there, so let me know if you missed something. Hello, Willie. Hank wants what Hank gets. Yep. Or he gets what he wants. It's one of the two. I don't know. But this may be a little bit noisy. I hope not too much. Uh, I am going to show you guys how I like finish the tube ends for actually putting in the fitting, which is even noisier itself. So I might be muting the mic at some point here, but... Kind of just stick around. Working on computers can get noisy, so I'm sure you've been there. But we're going to get this tube run done here, which is actually it's a really tight 90. So I'm just going to put a 90 somewhere close to the end, and we're going to just trim it down to size once I get that all figured out. So that's usually the best way to go about it, especially with a pretty simple bend. There's no point in trying to bend it exactly to length right away. It's a much better idea to just kind of cut it down and... Work with it as you go. I'll try to get you guys a little bit better angle here on what I'm doing. 
So if you guys check, checked out uh, our stream last night, I was, we were showing off a barrel, uh, like bending plate. It's kind of a guide. It's not exactly a mandrel, but it helps with bending. That's something that uh, someone could link. They're like 30 bucks. Uh, I think I'll definitely try to pick one up here soon just to demo it for you guys. That is one tool that I would probably add to this list of tools for tubing that you guys might want to use for helping with your bends. I do have mandrels as well. However, I've always found that mandrels aren't always the best uh, tool to have around. They are definitely nice when you need to just make one perfect bend. However, there's a lot of runs in a, a rig that will you know, not always be a perfect bend. So it's just kind of, your mileage may vary when you're using mandrels. They're definitely not a bad tool to have around by any means. So pick some up if you think it'll help you out. But otherwise, I kind of just kind of eyeball it. I do have a little square down here to help me with my 90s. But that's pretty much all I'll ever use. But if you'll notice, this is definitely acrylic by how long it takes to heat up. It isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, like I said, it's just slightly more time consuming to use acrylic tubing. But uh, here we are, it's pretty much heated up to be bent here. Definitely plenty enough. So I'll kind of show you guys how that goes here. Adjust the camera. And all, all I got here is just my little carpenter square. And as I said, this stuff bends just like I bent with PTG. Uh, there's really nothing to it. If you, if you thought I had like tricks up my sleeves right there, there was nothing. I just bent that after heating it up. So... Part of it is getting used to like what temperature the tube actually bends at. Um, I do like to heat up a little bit more than just the little area that you would actually bend at. Um, as you can see, I kind of held it a few inches above. I think Daniel says to do like six inches. I'm not sure. Um, but you definitely got to just play around with your heat settings. I've always used low heat on my heat gun. Um, I'd rather do it a little slower than get there too quick and then you end up melting tubing and whatnot um kind of slow and steady wins the race here so you just kind of feel it as you go along this stuff should actually harden up pretty quick which is another good thing about acrylic is that once you do actually get the bend in it pretty much just locks right in right away but that was kind of just a quick attempt at a 90 and pretty much as good as you're going to get a 90 probably by hand and I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's any big deal to me. So now we're going to have to sit here and cut it down, which is the long and grueling process, but uh, that's kind of the way it goes. I've cut all these 500 millimeter tubes in half just because all these runs aren't that big. Um, but Singularities does come in 500 millimeter lengths. You guys do have some longer runs to do. Better be sweet AF. Should put Kool Aid mix in it. Yeah, we can probably put Kool Aid in it. We'll see if Hank appreciates Kool Aid in his loop. Kool Aid. Kool Aid. Jeez. That flex right when she gets hot gets me every time. Hello, everyone. Says Aubrey, you heat up like entire tubes and do spirals. I, you definitely gotta stream that. That'll be that'll be some impressive work right there. When you stream your spirals. So for cutting this tube, one thing that I would kind of recommend trying out. Um, I do use just a scroll saw here to actually cut it. However, uh, if you're using just like a regular hacksaw too, this could maybe even help you. It will help hold the tube into the hacksaw a little better. I mean, I could demo using the hacksaw if you guys really care. Otherwise, I might just bust out the scroll saw. Um, but I like to tape it, especially with the scroll saw. The scroll saw really appreciates the tape. It helps it not melt the tubing when you're cutting through it. So all I'm going to do is put a little tape on it. We're going to mark this off. Oh, wow, I probably should put it up a little higher. Like I said, it's really close to the bend, so we're going to kind of eyeball it, and I need a marker. So we're just trying to make a 90 right here, and it looks like right about, I'm going to hopefully start a little bit long. I'd rather have to cut more off than try to start over again, but... Here, I guess I'll start with the, the scroll saw, and you guys can tell me if you really hate it that much. Um, it's just a scroll saw. I will mute the mic for a second, though, just so you guys don't completely die on me.
How can you say, ah, the noise? I just muted it. It's all good now. But as you saw, cuts pretty easy, especially with the tape. If you don't use tape, you'll find that pretty much any electric saw is going like, to start to melt it, which isn't actually a huge deal. Um, you can usually just break it off or just cut it again, and it'll come apart. But having a little tape on it actually pretty much stops all the melting from happening. Not exactly sure about, about the chemistry behind that. However, I just know it works, so try it out if you want. But I'm going to kind of just ream it a little bit. I definitely cut it long, so I'm thinking we're going to have to cut it again no matter what I do. But we'll kind of double check it. We can at least eyeball it here. And that might actually be just fine once we chamfer it and everything. So I'm honestly going to mark this other one. We're going to a piece of tape on this side. So we're going to cut the other side, and we'll see how close we actually are. Make sure I get the tape in the right spot. That'd be helpful. So, I'm not sure if any of you guys work with acrylic and you have any other tips or tricks. Be, be sure to share those with the audience because I'm sure they would like to know. Acrylic is a little bit different of a beast than PTG. I would say if you are just starting with rigid tune and it is your first time ever, maybe start with PTG. But, in all honesty, it's really, like I said, this acrylic is just you know, you got to take a little bit more time into actually like prepping the tubing as far as getting it ready to install and whatnot. Well, hi. What's up? Look at everybody here. Thank you, everyone, for stopping in. Hey, Bobby. And hey, Carlos. I'm back to use acrylic after not using for a while. I've been using a bit power lately, but I'll probably try this SC to compare it. Yeah, I've tried quite a few actual different brands of PTG as well as acrylic and all that good stuff and I don't know there's just something about the SC acrylic that it's really easy to bend and I mean as far as the rest of it goes it's acrylic so I'm gonna cut this other piece here I'll, I'll quick mute it um I can cut with the with the hacks off you guys want to see that too I saw the build. Good job not putting the radiator before the pump, Matt. No problem, dude. I figured I could at least do that much. I like the way acrylic feels when working with it. it just feels solid. Yeah, that's true. As I was kind of saying, after this bend was cooling, it really doesn't take long to cool down. And when it does, I mean, she's definitely bent. So, it is kind of nice to work with. So, I don't know. Try it out, guys. If you've worked with PTG for a while, I definitely encourage you to try it. Uh, I feel like there is nothing wrong with PETG at the end of the day. However, um, if you look at like Mayhem's coolant charts, <laughs> there's a lot more coolants out of like at least Mayhem's line that is compatible with acrylic over PETG. So it is a more durable plastic overall. So just something to keep note of. All right, so I actually might have cut it just about pretty much exactly how it needs to be cut, which means we can go on to how I uh, chamfer the ends. That is something that you definitely do. Um, I was using the hand reamer there a little bit, as you guys saw, and that you can use it. You're just going to sit there all night as far as that goes with uh, chamfering acrylic. It's pretty hard compared to PETG. I know for PETG, this is all you need to chamfer it. Um, however, I'll show you guys. I'm going to whip out the palm sander here really quick because it it still takes a little time even with a palm sander, so you guys will see why I do it. But I'm going to have to mute the microphone for that too, just because that's pretty loud. So just kind of pay attention and chat at me if you guys got any questions as I got it. Hell, the camera is sober up. It hasn't, is it, is it really unfocused? All right, camera, sober up. We'll be back in a second.
Okay. Stream needs background music. I know, I was going to say I could try to throw some on, but I know it's just going to take me longer every time I mute it to, to play the music again and then mute the microphone and all that good stuff. But uh, let me know. Hero it is. Oh, hero, it is I, he says. Hello. <laughs> oh, hi, Carlos. Well, what's up, Frederick? Uh, as you saw there, I just chamfered it with uh, the sander there. I kind of just sanded around the edges. Um, that seems to me to get the most consistent and best kind of chamfer on the acrylic tubing in the shortest amount of time. I know that took a little bit, but as I was kind of mentioning it earlier, just the nature of working with acrylic, it's um, not exactly the softest tubing, but that's kind of why we love it. So put a little bit of water on it to help put it into the fitting. I think we'll start with this guy right here, and it is a... It is going to be a really tight squeeze. Um, that's a good thing, though. You would not want your tubing ever to be loose in your fitting. Otherwise, it will probably leak. So I think we got that end in. Let's see if we can get uh, this side in. It's all going to be very tight, as this whole build has been this entire time. So we're going to try to tighten this up. I hope that's not, it might be a little bit too tall still, so we'll see. I knew this would be a tough one, though. As far as getting there to seat all the way. Oh, there we go. So it's all the way seated. Um, it actually looks pretty darn close, although the tube is trying to keep this compression ring from screwing on straight, which is less than ideal. Not sure how we get around this bugger here. Ooh, did I get it? Huzzah! I mean, as far as I can tell, it's about as straight as it'll get, probably. I mean, let's give you guys a little closer look here. You guys can take a gander. Newest waste of money idea, mineral oil computer with the oil inside your loop. <laughs> yeah, that'd be wonderful. Acrylic tubing, I'm pretty sure, is fine with mineral oil, as far as I know. Um, so you can try it out. Uh, there we go. Can you guys see that at all? It is kind of dark in there. Let me get you a little light. So, there you go. There's a first run done that we needed to do. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure, as much as I can tell, that's that's square. So, I don't know. You guys tell me if it needs to be redone or not. But I'm pretty satisfied with it. Maybe I'll look at it more and we'll get back to it. Next, we have to go from the GPU to the CPU here which is technically a straight shot, but there's a little bit of an offset in it. So I wanted to show you guys that, just kind of doing a, this is a bend that Amanda really couldn't help you with. Amanda could have helped you here with a simple 90. Uh, however, I kind of showed you how easy it is to just get a 90 done anyways. Um, but this one is definitely something you just got to freehand it and kind of fly by the seat of your pants. So let's uh, tackle this guy. It is massively curved. Well, there should be a nice 90 degree curve in it. I would hope. It's what we were aiming for. Let me back you up here a little bit. Here, heat gun out. Grab another tube Reno. Lines up exactly with top of water block. Yeah, I don't. It looks square to me. I mean, maybe it's off by a degree. I'm just afraid that this. You guys saw how the compression ring was like tilted on there because the, the bend in the tube wants to help seat the, the compression ring there that you screw on. If I go up any further with it, if I cut off any more, I'm afraid I might not be able to get that compression ring to Oh boy, one second.
Okay, so the air compressor kicked on and I thought it would shut off, but it never did, so I unplugged it. And here we are, back to bending. Nothing actually happened. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I bought my heat gun at Harbor Freight. Yeah, we do sell heat guns, however, you can find them at your local hardware store as well. Um, this tube is almost getting bent. I'm trying not to get my arm too much in the way here. Maybe I should switch the camera angle. Uh, for this bend, we definitely want to make sure, though, that we get an extra amount of tubing as far as lengthwise heated up. Just because it's not just a simple 90 here we're bending, we're trying to do almost two bends in one. Uh, it's never a bad idea to heat up a little bit extra length on the tubing just to make sure you don't have it like start to kink up or anything along the way. So we're going to get it nice and heated up. As far as I've noticed with this acrylic tubing, it's pretty hard to overheat it, although you can, so you do want to watch it. But let's see how it does now. And fix your camera angle here as the tube starts to sag. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball this, see how close I can get it the first time around. Ooh, I think I'm going to get some more heat on it, to be honest. So let me get you guys some. As long as you, uh, I should be able to keep this going. As long as you keep heat on it, it's not too bad to keep bending. Uh, if you, like, try to re-bend one that you've already bent, a piece of tube, maybe a little tricky to get it back to go back to the shape that you actually want it to be. Uh, however, if you do it all the first time around, usually you can keep it intact here. We'll see though. It definitely needs a little more length heated up as well. It's a, it's like a full tube width, uh, kind of offset that we got to go through here. So I want to make sure that I get the whole thing done right. I will be checking comments soon if you guys are asking questions. Just a little hard to read and bend at the same time. So as you can kind of see, I'm just twisting the tubing or turning the tubing on the insert. That seems to work pretty good for me, at least. Uh, almost like you're spinning a hot dog. But let's see if we got it good and hot now. It should be, yeah. She's nice and saggy now. All droopy and such. There we go. Let's see if we can get this. Let me use the edge of the mod mat here as my straight edge. That should be pretty good right there, I'm thinking. Just want to make sure these are straight. Nothing wrong with the tube as far as like bubbles or anything goes, so that's a good sign. Just hold it here for a second. Make sure it stays straight. So, I wonder if I got it or if I did too much. I can't quite tell you, to be honest. That way we can pull this out. Um, I may have to cut it down to actually find out if I did it right or not. Although, we do have a little bit of room to work with this 90. And maybe too much? I can't really tell. I might have bent it too much. I'm trying to figure it out before we get that far. Um, we'll try. So, this is going to be a fun one to cut down. Because we gotta cut down both sides, and I honestly can't really tell you how long. I mean, we can get our little measuring tape out here. We can measure between the two fittings, so we're at about two and three quarters inches, or just shy. So overall, we need this thing to be two and three quarters inches long. Um, and wow, the bend takes up quite a bit, so uh, we'll see what we can do here. I started off right there. Oh boy. This is me really fun. We're going to tape around it right where the bend starts, pretty much on both ends, because the tube is pretty much the length of this bend here. Or at least the run has to be about as long as this bend is. That's 
great planning on my part. Hopefully, hopefully this tube is usable. I'm not sure. It might be a duck. But that is the way it goes with hard tubing sometimes, guys. Some bends take a couple tries. I know some people get discouraged or even might not try rigid tubing because they're afraid of wasting tubing. But honestly, no matter what you do, you're going to waste a little bit of tubing with rigid tubing. I really wouldn't worry about it. The SC stuff that I have here really is not that expensive. Uh, you get a lot for, for what you're paying for anyways. So let's see here. The starter right there. So two and three quarters comes out right there. So I'm gonna mark this out. We've got the line. We can put a line right over here. And then right about. It should be about right, I think. We'll see. Hopefully it's a little bit long so I can cut it down, but this should at least be enough to make sure that it is um, actually the right bend. Oh no, you said a bad word in chat. Such a naughty word. Mmm, hot dog. How did you manage to vertically mount the GPU? Ah, that was a lot of work, my friend. Uh, um, I've spent pretty much the last two weeks rebuilding this whole case. Pretty much, um, I've kept a few of the main frame. I can turn back to the build and explain this for a second. Um, all I've really kept from the case itself is the front and then the back, and even the back is pretty much all replaced. As you can see, the car is vertically mounted into the back panel. Uh, I got a little support bracket there. The tubing really actually helps uh, keep it in place too, if you didn't notice. Now you're going to have just one tube in. This tube should help too, though. Uh, so overall, it's a lot of work to get it vertically mounted. In this small of a case, it's the Evolve MITX. Um, I've also obviously kept the exterior, the front, and the top, uh, as well as the feet on the bottom. The tempered glass still goes on and everything. We just don't have it on right now. Overall, there's a ton of work to get all this stuff fit in this case. Uh, that's why I've spent pretty much 100 hours or so on this build already. And we're almost there. Uh, definitely got some cable management left to do. We got cable mod cables coming in. They're actually going to arrive at PVCs on Tuesday. Um, I'll be shipping this off on Monday, so next week hopefully you guys can see uh, someone down there install the cables and kind of wrap the build up because uh, there's really not much left I can do after we get the tubing in and leak test it. So let's get this piece cut. I'm going to actually meet you guys again, or not, mute me, uh, you guys. You guys keep talking. I'll get to you as soon as I can. I've been mon bending monsoon tubing so far pretty good. Yeah, th there's plenty of brands. If you just practice, that's what I've noticed is Practice and stick to the same brand. If you're going to buy something, as far as tubing goes, buy one brand, stick to it, and, you know, unless you really are having a bad time, then uh, maybe you want to try switching. But otherwise, it really helps to stick to one brand. Every tube, I feel, bends a little bit different. So, hey, Matt, what's the guard block? Oh, they're all EK blocks in here. Uh, we got the RTX 2080 block, and then we got a Velocity back there with a nice little wood mod on it to match the exterior panels. So... That's that, but here we go, we're going to cut this real quick. All right, so as you can kind of tell, when you're using a saw, as far as like a scroll saw or a band saw goes, you do you have to be careful to make sure you keep it straight, uh, the tube when you're cutting it, because a square edge is something you definitely want in a compression fitting for rich tubing. So that is one little tip. The the hand saw or the hacksaw with the little guide is another cheap way to go about cutting it. It may help you a little bit keeping it straight as far as that goes. 
This is actually a really short tube. This is kind of ridiculous. So, um, well, we own it. So it is actually pretty much the right length as it is. Although, is it the right bend? It's still tough to tell without trying to shove it in there. So maybe we'll have to sand one end down and see if it actually lines up still. And we'll go with this one into the CT block. So I do kind of run the reamer for the inside just a little bit to make sure there's nothing held up in there. You can run around the edge here. Um, as I kind of said, it just takes a while to use the hand reamer to actually get your good chamfer on the tube, which really kind of helps with how easy it is to put the tubing in. So I would suggest at least getting out some, <laughs> some sandpaper uh, and doing it by hand, because even that is probably faster than the reamer. So I'm going to mute real quick and sand this tube up a little bit. This is too much. The commentary is killing me. I'm sorry. Matt will huff and puff and blow your dirt. <laughs> oh boy. Keyboard dribble. What's wrong with keyboard dribble? I'm not dribbling. Is this an MATX I, or ITX case? Am I seeing? Uh, this is an MITX case, so yeah, that's why everything's so small. Um, besides the GPU, it, it's definitely a full size GPU. This is the mistake that uh, Hank really tried to make me pay for here this time. So this is going to be really hard to get this tube in. But. We can get her, I think. We can put a little water on it. That should help. Uh, ease it in. Somebody should invent some tube lube if there isn't some already. That'd be, that'd be handy. Some non toxic stuff or something. Yeah. So I'm holding on to the back plate just so I don't get too much pressure onto the block. Um, and like flex the motherboard or anything like that. Let me see here. So I think it's pretty well seated. However, the bend looks a little excessive. I'm thinking. I'm definitely thinking it's a little excessive. I mean, we can try to line it up here, but yeah, the bend is definitely a little much. I'm thinking we'll have to redo this bad boy. Um, you know, thinking about it, if I would have left it, I might have been able to go straight into the original GPU port if I would have left it longer um, and not even use that fitting there. Herm, so I could try that again. Do the same bend except for just go back into the port. That's unfortunate. I shouldn't have cut it, I guess. But let's get it out of here because she is just not going to work in her current state. So um, let me think here. Should we? 
go for the straight shot or should I just go for a little bit uh, easier of a bend or less crazy so yeah it is a, it is probably about a half inch too much so I think I'll just try to go a little bit easier on the bend here uh, you guys can see how that's done one more time hopefully the compressor kicking on this time I did have I unplugged it so the air compressor should be dead now for the night cheer thank you for all the cheers Carlos Aubrey, yo, real quick before I forget, Matt, 40 chicken nuggets are $7.99 at McDonald's. Dude, I should probably go get some. I didn't eat dinner already, but I'm going to get hungry after this, so I might have to head into town and get me some some dank-ass sea nugs, man. So let's go again for this bend here. Let's see if you guys can get a little better angle on it this time. Or my hand's in the way. Let me bring you guys over here. Come to this side with me, my friends. The other side. Oh, my hand's still nicely in the way. Um, <laughs> this is awkward. You can kind of get the idea here. You can see how high I'm holding the tube uh, from the end of the heat gun here. I don't have a nozzle or attachment on it. This is just the straight up stock end of it. So, kind of guesstimate where you got to hold yours from that but uh, feel free to dm me guys or anything if you guys are having trouble with bending tubing i'm always happy to give you guys some tips and tricks uh you guys can show me how you're doing with your bends and i can kind of give you some advice from there if you got some pictures of tubes that you've been trying to get but can't quite get there i'm always happy to help so we're just heating up a good extra section of this like i tried to show you guys last time uh as this is basically two bends in one so Make sure we don't have any issues with bending that much tube at once. So this is the last run we need. As I said, the, the one that's on the top that's going to the radiators there that you see that's not completed, I already do have that cut to length, and I have confirmed that it holds air. So as long as that 90 that we put in, and hopefully this one holds air, um, should be able to leak test this guy with the Dr. Drop here shortly, and... That's kind of that. So let's see if I get this bend right. I think it's pretty much ready here. We got it pretty nice and toasty. Let me uh, bring you guys on down to the mod mat. Welcome. Down here we're going to bend this tube here. And I'm thinking right about there. Probably about right. So that, you kind of just see, I'm pushing basically the, each end of the tubing in towards the, each other, like, that way. Uh, it's really hard to do with both my hands trying to hold this tube. Um, but that's really all I'm doing here, is I'm pushing the ends into each other, basically, and it kind of creates a kink, almost. Um, but it is a bend, nonetheless. Hopefully it's tight enough, because as I said, you, this, this whole run is only like two and three quarters inches long, so... If this doesn't work, then I'm going to go back to trying to do it without any of the angled fittings that I that I have on there. I have a dual rotary 90 or 2x45 um, to try to help me get a little bit closer with the bend, but maybe we don't need it. We'll see. But that bend turned out just fine, too. The, the tubing really holds its shape really nicely and easily, in my opinion, which is a great thing about the acrylic. So there we go. Now we just have to cut it to length again once again here. It was so much fun. I know you guys enjoyed that part quite a bit, but let's taper off so we can cut it. And hopefully I got it right this time, eh? So this is just uh, painter's tape. I actually linked this in our last stream. We do sell it, but it's also commonly found at your hardware stores. So i uh, fix them up. I like painter tape a little better than just your regular brown masking tape. Uh, as this stuff is supposed to like not leave any residue and all that good stuff. Um, overall though, you can kind of use whatever masking tape you want, in all honesty. So there we go. Let me see. Where should we cut this bad boy? This one might actually be a little bit better overall for a bend. Um, as it looks, get out my marker. So two and three quarters would be right about there. Let's move it over. So we got 
not that mark. Here we got this mark. So right about there. I usually like to cut a little bit long, so I'd rather have to cut it down than have to start over. So let's get back to cutting it. I can bring you guys over here again and kind of show you that. But I think you get how the scroll saw works. Pretty simple tool. But uh, let's get this cut up here. As you can see there, I did cut a little bit long. Hopefully it's not too long. I don't like recutting, but as I said, it is better than starting all over again with the whole bend. So let me see if I can actually line it up as far as that goes. No, it should actually be pretty good just the way it is. Maybe I'm always like marking a little short, so it's good I cut it long. Ends up being perfect. Maybe. We'll see. Aubrey says, oh. Learned that a few days ago about the nuggets. You, you've known this information for a few days, and now you decide to tell me about the nuggets. It's kind of rude, you know. I would have left that part out. So, um, I'm going to get out the palm sander again here. So, I apologize for the noise. So, I'm going to mute.
How cold is the shop tonight? Uh, it's about 60 degrees in here. I turned off the heater though so it doesn't uh, distract with the noise since you guys love noise so much. We didn't need to add any more to it. And I apologize, it does take a little bit to sand that down. However, the better you chamfer the end of your tube, especially with these bits power fittings, uh, the easier it is to get them in. So if you spend a little extra time on it, you're going to kind of save yourself some some hassle and maybe some cursing trying to get your tubing in. So kind of recommend it anyways. It's never a bad thing to take your time with a hard tubing loop. So let's see if this tube works out. Um, I'm really hoping it does. Y'all can cross your fingers for it. Pray to the loop gods. Do whatever you got to do. Oh man, pray to the fitting gods so I can get this thing in here. We need their help. It's really hard to push in since I can't push on it straight. Really. Okay, I think that's in. Now I just gotta get it turned. Turned? Is that what the kids say these days? I think. This is so hard. It's so hard because it's rigid tubing. Uh -huh. Sorry, that was terrible. South Florida. Nice shirt, Matt. Yeah, sorry if it's in the way. Um, it's really hard to get any kind of hands in this build and not cover it up. <laughs> or any part of me in front of it, really. So, I can't even tell if it's seating in this uh, fitting that goes to the block. I think it is. So I think I can try to put the compression rings on it. I should have done that already because now we got to pop it out. But as far as I can tell, you guys can't. Uh-oh. Did the camera die? Oh, man. You guys can still hear me, but the camera isn't working. That's wonderful. Oh, I see. The camera became unplugged. So, you're still out there. One moment. And let's see if we can get this back. Um, if I go to camera settings. Yeah, rip camera. Where is the webcam? That doesn't do it. Properties. Yeah, they save properties. Activate. Alrighty then, we're back. So sorry about that brief intermission there, folks. But uh, as you can kind of see here, I believe it lines up. I'm hoping it's fully seating into this fitting right here. It's pretty much impossible to tell <laughs> uh, since it's a little bit in a tight spot. So. We're going to pull it off, and we're going to try to get these compression rings on it. Hopefully we can. I mean, I really got to hand it to Vince Bauer. If you can get a tube into the fitting, it is not going to go anywhere. Oh, boy. I'm not actually sure if that was what seating in this tube or in this fitting. I definitely got it to fully seat the other one, though. Oh, this is so impossible. Oh, there we go. So I might actually start with this one. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I even can. I suppose you kind of got to do them both at the same time. That's probably the smart way to do it, if it is going to be possible. We'll line it up there, and then let's kind of get it started, but let's make sure that it's seating in the GPU fitting right there. That is slightly concerning. So... It's really hard to tell. 
whether or not any of these are really seating that well. And I'm sorry if my arm's in the way again. Okay, thank God the video is back. I don't think I could have listened to Matt's grunts in the dark. What's wrong with that, Nori? You act like it's a bad thing. I should make you pay extra. So I'm really not sure if these are seating. It's really hard to tell with it being this close quarters. And I'm sorry, my elbow is like always in the way, but as I kind of was saying, it's really impossible to uh, sit here and not cover up the whole build when it's this big. But I am getting the collars tightened down. I mean, worst case Ontario here, we find out that it isn't quite seated and we get a little leak and we should be able to hear it out of here. So it would almost be nice to see that. As I said, I did get the doctor drop two whole there um, with everything but these two runs earlier. I just uh, capped off those ports with some just port covers and um, some plugs and it held air that way. So I would know that if it does leak now, it would be one of these two tubes and since the first tube that we put in went in pretty darn easy um i'm pretty sure it's good to go that one probably wouldn't be the issue it's going to be this one right here that uh is the bugger if that is indeed the scenario here so i don't know there we kind of got it all in there it's all tightened down the hatches are battered and the buttons are buttoned i don't know what all you say about stuff like that but we can get this top tube in here. This one's kind of fun too, as they all are. But this one we're sure fits, so at least we don't have to mess with it too much. This takes a little finagling. I think she's good. I do really like these Bitsar fittings. I've worked with them a bunch on Matt's build, and now a bunch more on Hank's build. Personally, I haven't spent a ton of money on them myself, as they are pretty spendy as far as compression fittings go. If you guys are looking for some more affordable ones, we got Barrel um, on site as well, so you guys can check those out. However, these are great. Um, I'm really having a good time working with them. They are really tight. However, once your tubing's in, uh, as I said, the first time I kind of put it together, it passed the leak test pretty easily. So we're going to, oh wait, I'm not going to use this port. This port's a beast to get to. We're going to use one of the GPU block ports to leak test out of since it's right here out in the front. So I'll show you guys how this works. The Dr. Drop is linked in the description. Somebody wants to go ahead and link it in like Twitch chat for all those lovely people in Twitch chat. I would much appreciate it. Uh, but all I got here is soft tubing, uh, a couple soft tubing compression fittings, so you'll definitely need those with it as well. Um, really whatever size you want. This is 3 8 5 8 And just some excess PC fittings because they're cheap. So, and they do the job here. And all you do is hook it up to an open port that you got. Um, ideally, you can hook it up to the reservoir. However, as I said, that's going to be a little bit of a hassle to get to, so... We're just going to cut to the chase tonight. Hook it up to the GPU block port since it's right there. Uh, so we got it hooked up, tubing, everything to the gauge here. And now we got to grab the pump right over here, which says Aqua Computer on it. Pretty cool. We just thread that on to the gauge here. And then we'll get to pumping. Look at that. Lightning Man's on it. Thank you. Colton, what's up, man? You should be like doing something fun with your Friday night. You don't, you're not into this stuff. No, nah, I'm kidding. You kind of do get into it, so I'm glad you stopped by, buddy. Ooh, yep. I can hear the CPU loop, or not the CPU loop, but the this this guy is leaking. So, and you can watch the Doctor Drop here. This is the great thing about the Doctor Drop. So, in the past, you might have just thrown water in this thing. And boom, you've already got a leak. Granted, I would definitely recommend that you're using a jumper and everything so you're not going to short anything if you do get a leak. That's a fine way to go. However, you still have a mess to clean up at that point. And as you can kind of see here, I'll show you on the gauge here, it's really easy to tell that there's a leak. And it's just dropping pressure 
so you don't want to just go down it is only a little bit of air but not really so and i could you guys probably can't hear especially with me talking um but i can hear some air rushing out of one of these two fittings so that is the case here um i mean i can show you guys pictures of it but i'll probably just kind of end the stream here tonight as it is getting pretty late you do get the idea uh, all it's going to take is me getting this tubing run better or better seated, and it's just going to take a bit more finagling and what else you got to do. So uh, you do get the point. If you guys want to pick one of these up, I highly recommend it. It is a great tool for testing your loop. As I said, it saved us tonight. I mean, I could have filled this up with water and leak tested it that way, and boom, I would have already had a mess on my hands. Uh, so it is a it is a really cool tool, and we'll glad it it failed as. That way you guys can know that if that happens, don't fill up your loop. Try to fix whatever it is. Usually, as I said, you can hear where the leak is coming from, especially when it's out in the open. If it's like your pump top or something, it's a little bit harder to diagnose. But if anything, what you got to do is if you can't hear where the leak is coming from, is slowly uh, cap off things with Gina Quarter plugs. So you show a bunch of plugs laying around. Slowly kind of cap off things and then just pressure test one component at a time. Even just pull out your graphics card. Test that. Maybe there's something not seating in the block properly. You got a loose O-ring in there that could be leaking. So uh, you guys can use this. It's a great tool just to diagnose any kind of loop issues you might have. So as you saw here tonight, Carlos, nice link. Thank you. What is that? What is the name of the tool, Doctor Drop? He actually just, uh, Mr. Francis, he, he, Carlos linked it right above where you said that. So click on that link and uh, check it out. It is the Aqua Computer Doctor Drop. Aqua Computer has stock on Amazon. Well, thank you, Mr. Andrew. Um, I think we can probably try to sell it on Amazon, too, if you guys want. I'll see about that, though, on Monday. Context does help. But I do appreciate everyone stopping by. As I said, check out the links below for everything you kind of saw in this stream. Um, I will be sending off some pictures to the group and Instagram and all that good stuff. So get there, and I will have pictures of this all kind of finished up. I won't be filling this before I ship it. However, on Monday, I do plan on doing a little stream of me packing this up so you guys can see what, I, what all I'm going to go through to get this thing back to Florida so Hank can get this up and running next week, hopefully. As I said, the cables are coming in on Tuesday, and that's pretty much the final piece of the puzzle here. Uh, Kit Mandarin is a little bit of a doozy back there, but I'm going to be playing with this this weekend. I'll hit you guys up with some pictures of the completed loop and what run I actually ended up going with for that tube right there. Um, but overall, the whole stream tonight was definitely about the acrylic tubing. Highly encourage you guys to check that out. That's right. Why don't we give away um, some SC acrylic? So whoever would like to step up to the plate, there should be a question here. The prize will be one pack. It's two pieces of 500 millimeter. These are like cut in half. So two pieces about this this long of uh, SC acrylic tubing for your loop so you can practice whatever you want to do. But the question is going to be how many compression fittings are in this loop? So compression fittings as in these guys right here, the ones that hold the tubing. So tell me how many compression fittings are in the loop, and you shall be the winner of the SC Acrylic. So just type it in chat, whatever chat you're in. I'm watching chat right now. Let's see it. Come on, people. Get your guesses going. Oh, wow. Matt Hatta right out of the gate. You piece of crap. I'm kidding. You're a great guy, Matt Hatta. You haven't won in the last month, have you, Mr. Matt Hatta? I don't think you have. I'm pretty sure you haven't. Tell me. Nori's right behind him. Nope. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. Matt Hatta on Twitch just came right out of the gate with 10. He is correct, as there's two radiators, a pump and res, a GPU block, and a CPU block, which totals a total of 10. Imagine that. Two per component. So, great job. Thank you, Matt Hatta. You know where to DM me. I'll get your tubing sent out on Monday. Uh, but I hope you do enjoy that. It is great tubing. You guys go check out Singularity Computers, what all they're doing. Daniel, I think, just finished up a build uh, there, so definitely go check that out. He's got some great stuff. He uses this all the time in his videos. He's even better at it than I am, so if you guys really need more tips, I'd definitely check it out Singularity Computers YouTube. Sorry if I didn't link it, but uh, somebody can if they want. I think you guys can just Google that up. He's a pretty popular dude, but we do appreciate that. He did send this out for this build, um, as well as the pump and res, so thank you, Daniel. And all of Singularity Computer's team, you guys are great. Everything you guys do down there is pretty pretty sick. Really happy to be able to work with you guys' stuff, as it does, in my opinion, really make building a loop a lot easier as far as tubing and pump reses and everything else that they have going on down there. 
All good stuff. So check that out, guys. I will catch you guys next week, though. As I said, when I'm packing this up, you got a test bench build coming up. Um, and you guys will see pictures from me and posts and whatnot of what's all happening with the build. But we're almost there. We're going to get this thing shipped off and all done, and I can't wait. So have a great weekend, guys. Happy modding, happy water cooling, and I will see you all next time.